Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Gavin Fish. This is my channel. For those of you who are subscribed and keep coming back for more, I really appreciate you taking a look at what I have to offer here on the channel. If you're new and you feel like I deserved it after you've watched this video, please consider subscribing. And I always ask everybody to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down on my videos so that I know what kind of content you guys want to see. Today, we are continuing our discussion about the death of Helena Hutchins, the 42-year-old cinematographer who was killed on the set of the movie Rust, which was being filmed out in Santa Fe, New Mexico, uh, starring and produced by Alec Baldwin. Now, uh, if you don't know anything about this case, just like at a five second wrap up, Helena Hutchins and director Joel Souza were shot with a 45 caliber uh, single action army Western style uh, pistol. Joel survived. He was shot in the shoulder, but uh, Helena Hutchins uh, did not survive. She was shot in the chest. Uh, and the big question that everybody seems to be talking about is will there be charges filed against the person who shot her, which is actor Alec Baldwin? So I thought that I would dig into um, the information on this and see if I could explain to you what I believe is likely to happen, okay? Uh, now, this, guys, you all know I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a law enforcement officer, I'm a complete lay person on this. I'm just a person who loves to do research. I love to talk to people uh, who are uh, experts and professionals. You can go back and look at my videos. I think I will go ahead and link one back to my conversation with Kenny Ballantyne, a filmmaker friend of mine, um, so that you can kind of see kind of the inside scoop on how this might have happened um, in the first place. Uh, in the history of movies, uh, well, the history of firearms in movies, which dates all the way back to the 1930s, we're almost 100 years into this, the only three incidents, I only know of three incidents where uh, there was a death on set that was caused by gunfire. Now, I'm not saying that that is great that there were only three, but but the safety record is pretty good. Um, and, and I guess I'm saying that as a preface to let you know that I'm going to talk about something else later uh, that goes into that. But yeah, Helena Hutchins, to my knowledge, is the third death by gunshot in the history of films. Though, I, I mean, I'm not a film historian. But anyway, I want to talk about two different things. Uh, the first is criminal liability, and the second is civil liability, though I'm going to talk about them uh, in a different order than that. Let, let's start with what a civil lawsuit is. A civil lawsuit uh, is initiated by a plaintiff uh, who is basically a person who feels like he or she has been wronged that uh, they were owed a legal duty by another person and that other person or corporation or organization did not fulfill their legal obligation to the plaintiff. So an example of that, guys, is like all over like Judge Judy, things like that. Those are all civil lawsuits. But an example would be like, in this case, a movie production failed to keep a cast or crew members safe from harm when they're reasonably expected or contractually obligated to do so. So that would be the kind of civil lawsuit that might be able to be brought um, in this case. Now, criminal lawsuits are different. Criminal lawsuits are uh, prosecution by a governing body for a violation of the criminal code, right? So um, an example of that would be a person shoots another person with a gun causing or with the intent to cause bodily harm or death. So you can see that both of these examples, uh, both the civil lawsuit example and the criminal lawsuit example might apply in the case of the death of Helena Hutchins. <clears throat> now, the question when uh, the prosecutor and the sheriff were asked about this the other day, 
they asked, will there be, uh, is there criminal liability? Is there civil liability? They, they were asked about negligence. They, uh, the response was at this time, we're not going to say anything about whether there was criminal or civil responsibility, whether there was criminal or civil negligence. What we will say are all options are on the table. And that has led a lot of media outlets to speculate that criminal charges are forthcoming. But, um, but I'm not necessarily sure that that is the case. Now, um, the other main difference between a civil and a criminal um, court proceeding is the standard of proof. And let's, uh, let's take a look at the standard of proof in a civil case. In a civil case, the standard of proof, and that is uh, in order for the plaintiff to win the case, they have to prove the preponderance of evidence. And basically what that means is there's enough evidence just barely to tip the balance in the favor of the plaintiff. Uh, of course, I mean, that's the minimum threshold, right? They, they also, they could, they could have an overwhelming amount of evidence, but all they really have to do is show that there's just a little bit more evidence than is needed in order to tip the balance in the favor of the person bringing the lawsuit, which is the plaintiff. That's very different from, uh, from the standard of proof in a criminal case, right? And the standard of proof in a criminal case is beyond any reasonable doubt. Now, those of you who have been watching my uh, channel for a while know that I've shared the story about the time that I served on a jury in a double homicide case. And I'm actually there. My wife brought up something that I learned in that case that she wants me to do a video on. So I think I will do that. But for the purpose of this video, uh, I think it's important to understand how jurors are, um, uh, are, are made to understand what beyond any reasonable doubt means. And so I looked up the, um, the instructions that are given in us district court. Uh, so I'm just going to read this proof beyond a reasonable doubt is proof that leaves you firmly convinced the defendant is guilty. It is not required that the government prove guilt beyond all possible doubt. Um, this is actually something that we struggle with and, or we struggled with in the jury room. And I would imagine that a lot of juries struggle with this is, um, you know, there's just a little bit of doubt in my mind. Does that mean that the defendant is not guilty? Well, according to the instructions that we received, it does not re beyond reasonable doubt does not remove all doubt, just reasonable doubt. So the second paragraph reads a reasonable doubt is a doubt based upon reason and common sense. It is not based purely on speculation. It may arise from a careful and impartial consideration of all the evidence or from lack of evidence. Now, I think the hardest thing for a jury, at least it was in the jury that I served on is to stay completely impartial because there are biases that we each have inside us that will sway the way we're going to uh, cast our vote as we deliberate as jurors, right? But we do need to uh, keep that, keep those, keep each one of those biases. Um, we, we need to remain impartial. It's very difficult to do, very difficult to do. Third paragraph, if after a careful and impartial consideration of all the evidence, you are not convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant is guilty, it is your duty to find the defendant not guilty. On the other hand, if a careful and impartial consideration of all the evidence, if after a careful and impartial consideration of all the evidence, you are convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant is guilty, it is your duty to find the defendant guilty. So those are jury instructions that are given to jurors in U.S. district courts. So now that we kind of discussed a little bit civil versus criminal and civil liability versus criminal liability, the standard of proof that, you know, the burden of proof on each side. I now I think that we can ask the question, uh, is it reasonable to bring charges against 
uh, Mr. Baldwin for uh, shooting and killing uh, Helena Hutchins. So uh, in in law enforcement, just as in civil and criminal uh, cases, there are actually uh, two burdens of proof that are required to uh, be met. Well, two burdens that are required to be met before an actor first can be arrested. An actor, anybody can either be arrested or uh, or charged. Now, uh, those burdens are at different levels. One exists for the police. One, and you know, investigating. So whether they're a sheriff's office or they're federal or local, whatever their burden that they have to meet is, um, wow, why am I blanking on this? The burden that they, <laughs> that they have to meet is, um, probable cause, right? Is, is there probable cause, uh, for me to arrest, um, to arrest this person? And, um, in the case of Mr. Baldwin and the death of the shooting of both Joel Souza and then the shooting and death of Helena Hutchins, law enforcement will be asking themselves as they interview, uh, is there probable cause to make an arrest here? And then on the, uh, law, well, on the prosecution side, then they have to meet the burden of reasonable doubt. So they typically both, um, at the prosecutor level and at the investigation from law enforcement level, they often will work closely together because they have two different burdens. Uh, DA may not want an arrest to be made because while there is probable cause, um, they don't feel like they can meet their burden of reasonable doubt. Um, so they will, they will work together on that. And sometimes it is a holy union. Sometimes it is an unholy union because they should be acting separate from one another, uh, in most cases and working closely with one another on kind of the iffy cases. And I think that there is proof in a lot of jurisdictions that, uh, the police sometimes give all arresting authority to the DA. They don't make arrests unless the district attorney's office will let them do that now. Okay. So, um, so I guess the next place we come to is, um, is Alec Baldwin criminally or civilly responsible for Helena Hutchins death? I think that we can all agree. And if you look at the comments on my, uh, on, on my previous videos, I think that we can all agree that Alec Baldwin did shoot Joel Souza and Helena Hutchins causing Helena Hutchins to die. Right. But is he criminal res criminally responsible for that act? That is a question that I think law enforcement is act asking themselves all the time. And they're trying to find a good answer to that. I'm going to be unpopular when I say that I personally believe that Alec Baldwin is probably not criminally responsible. Now I know, I know, I know, I know a lot of you believe that he's the one with a gun. He had the responsibility to check and make sure that the gun actually was cold, that there was no ammunition, whether it was blanks or live in well live or bullets, right? Um, it was his responsibility to check that 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 may be true when it comes to gun safety, but does, is it true when it comes to the criminal code and everything that I've researched on it? I do not think that he is criminally responsible. That's, that's my belief. He did shoot her. He did kill her and he did injure Mr. Souza, but I don't believe that he is criminally responsible for that. However, I do think he is probably civilly responsible for that because he is a producer on the film set of rust. It was, uh, here, I'll show you, uh, rust was being filmed right here at Bonanza Creek ranch. And the incident happened inside this building on the right hand of your screen. So as a producer, the family of Helena Hutchins and the family of Joel Souza could bring a civil case against Alec Baldwin claiming that he is civilly responsible for the death and injury of their, of their loved ones. In the case of Mr. Souza, he actually could bring that uh, case himself. Um, 
And because the civil lawsuit um, burden of proof or standard of proof is so low, it's just the preponderance of evidence, I think that they would be able to bring enough evidence to tip the balance in favor of themselves. I think that they would be able to find Alec Baldwin civilly responsible. Now, what would that mean for Alec Baldwin? Because what I am reading and viewing all over the internet, um, the talking heads are talking about how this may ruin Alec Baldwin financially because he was a producer on the case. But let's go back. Let's go now to what I kind of brought up in the beginning, the safety record of Hollywood when it comes to uh, deaths involving gunshots, there is such a thing called film insurance. In fact, on most sets, it is required. It's technically called production insurance. Um, most people call it film insurance and basically it protects the production company against property damage and bodily injury up to the covered amount. So if you think about it, it's like car insurance or homeowner's insurance, right? Car insurance is really easy to think about. If, uh, if you get in an accident and you have full coverage and you are to blame in the accident and you cause bodily injury or death to somebody, your insurance company will cover their medical and all of, all of the stuff that they claim up to a given amount, up to a covered amount, right? So most of us choose, uh, depending on our financial situation, because the more coverage that we want, the more we have to spend for it, uh, we will choose to have high coverage amounts on those bodily injuries on anything that we cause. Um, the same thing happens with film insurance. And typically it's underwritten using uh, the budget of the total production and what is being filmed and tons of other components. But in the case of the film Rust, one of those components is definitely, and I haven't seen the, the insurance policy, but it is going to cover accidental injury or death caused by gunshots because the most dangerous thing that they would be doing on set would be bodily injury right? With a gun. So, uh, the most dangerous thing that they'd be doing on set is pointing guns at cast and crew. That is a dangerous thing. Now the, the insurance industry that covers this, they now have a hundred years worth of data showing them that it is highly unlikely that anybody will ever be shot or killed on a movie set with a gun, even when there are guns all over the set. Right. And so likely they probably they probably covered it up to a pretty darn good amount. Now, uh, here's some examples of what are some of the things that film insurance covers. Uh, the very first one that is listed on every insurance company's website that I go to are costs associated with death or sickness to cast or crew along with a whole bunch of other stuff like damage to the, to the stuff you've shot, um, you know, prop sets and wardrobes being damaged, filming equipment, all that stuff, right? Liability to the location where you're filming on. Uh, but the very first thing is death or sickness to cast or crew. So my guess is Mr. Baldwin, while he could be civilly liable, it probably won't cost him his, his fortune, his life savings, right? Because that civil, um, let's see the, the civil, let me go over here to the civil lawsuit, right? The, um, they, well, where was I? The example. Yeah. So an example of a civil lawsuit where they failed to keep a cast member safe from harm, uh, and them kind of, you know, overcoming this burden of proof of the preponderance of evidence, uh, if a jury awards um, the plaintiffs in any case that comes civilly against the production of rust, that will be covered by film insurance up to their covered amount. So it really boils down to what kind of award a jury would give to, um, you know, to the plaintiffs. Now, one other thing that I might mention in all this is that... Um, the, what am I trying to say here? The one other thing that I might mention in this is that, uh, they likely, 
the man, I'm having a real hard time spitting this out. I, I don't think that a jury is going to, when they, when they figure out compensation for the award, um, part of it is, uh, part of it is, you know, what the person is liable for. And then there will be like damages, uh, that, that are, um, punitive in nature. Now, in those cases, those can go, those can run really, really, really high. Uh, so I guess it's possible that Alec Baldwin's fortune is at stake here, but my guess is that film insurance will cover it. So, um, yeah, that may not be what you want to hear because just judging on the comments that I've gotten on my last couple of videos, that may not be what you want to hear, but I think that, uh, probably, uh, Mr. Baldwin, uh, is going to be okay financially. I don't think that he's going to be okay mentally. I don't think he's going to be okay physically. And ultimately the, the, I don't want to victimize him here because the victims are Helena Hutchins, the cinematographer who was shot in the chest and killed and, um, uh, Joel Souza, who was shot in the shoulder and, uh, and he did survive. So I guess that is what I wanted to communicate with you guys today. I hope that you've enjoyed the discussion. I hope that you will uh, put some comments down uh, below and tell me where I'm right or wrong. Ask me any questions that you want me to answer in my next video. And uh, again, if you're new here and you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate a subscription if you think I've earned it. All right, guys, with that, I shall bid you adieu and I hope to see you the next time. Take care. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below.